Our world lead now, two top Republicans urged President Trump to address what they call Hungary's significant erosion of democracy in the president's meeting today with Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban. Orban is known for being staunchly anti-immigrant. A United Nations report this month said asylum seekers in Hungary are immediately detained and some even, quote, deliberately deprived of food, unquote. But today, President Trump applauded the Hungarian leader, saying that according to many people, Orban is tough and has done the right thing on immigration. As CNN's Caitlin Collins now explains, Amnesty International has another word for those immigration policies, draconian. It was 20 years ago, first time here. First time in the history of Hungary. The last time Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban met one-on-one -on -one with an American president, Bill Clinton was in office. Well, I am delighted to welcome Prime Minister Orban. But today, the far-right leader, heavily criticized by human rights organizations, returned to the White House. It's a great honor to have with us the Prime Minister of Hungary. Both Presidents George W. Bush and Barack Obama shunned Orban, who was once seen as a promising reformer. His reputation changed dramatically as he rolled back Democratic checks on his power, pulled his nation closer to Russia and China, and erected a razor wire fence to keep migrants out. Probably like me, a little bit controversial, but that's okay. That's okay. You've done a good job and you've kept your country safe. Under his leadership, Amnesty International has criticized Hungary for its systematic crackdown on the rights of refugees and migrants, its rollback on human rights, instances of excessive use of force by police at the border, and insufficient recognition and prosecution of rape and other forms of sexual violence. President, thank you very much for the invitation. Thank you. In a speech last year, Orban said, we do not want to be diverse and we do not want to be mixed. We do not want our own color, traditions, and national culture to be mixed with those of others. Last week, a bipartisan group of senators on the Foreign Relations Committee warned Trump that under Orban, democracy in Hungary has significantly eroded. But officials say his meeting with Trump was a hard get. Orban was the first foreign leader to endorse Trump in 2016, but he's the last from Central Europe to secure a White House invite. The administration says the meeting is part of a bigger strategy to distance Hungary from Russia and China. Yet the meeting raises questions about which leaders Trump is willing to cultivate. I know he's a tough man, but he's a respected man. According to former White House strategist Steve Bannon, the two have a lot in common. I can tell Viktor Orban triggers him like Trump. He was Trump before Trump. Now, that praise you heard from President Trump for the Hungarian prime minister today, Jake, is exactly what the president's advisors were worried about, that he would seem too chummy or have too warm of an embrace for him, a leader that they're trying to keep at an arm's length. All right, Caitlin Collins at the White House, thanks so much. Uh, let's talk about this with the experts. So, Bill, uh, according to Caitlin Collins reporting, uh, White House advisors didn't want him to appear too chummy. He seemed pretty chummy. Yeah, and, and normally I think if one met with someone like Orban, there'd be at least background briefings that in private, at least, the U.S. president would have urged Orban to let up on his attempts to curb the free media, to curb academic freedom, to stop the courts from reviewing cases and so forth. It's a pretty systematic, gradual, not, you know, grotesque, but gradual authoritarianism in Hungary. Uh, by a man, Orban, is kind of a tragic figure, who was a key figure in the democratization in 89, and, you know, in the early years, he really turned in this direction. But one has no impression, needless to say, that Donald Trump said a word that might slow Orban down in his author authoritarian tendencies. Yeah, and everything that, that people accuse President Trump of doing, and, and they can be quite hyperbolic sometimes, Orban is actually doing. Uh, and the president, in his comments, risks giving Orban cover by saying, oh, we're both controversial, et cetera, as if that Orban is, is just the same as President Trump. I mean, he risks giving him cover and a platform and a seal of approval. I mean, that's what we saw happen right there in the Oval Office. But this meeting didn't just happen, uh, you know, because the president wanted. There's been a, a systematic a campaign by the government of Hungary hiring U.S. lobbyists, including a former uh, Florida member of Congress, uh, Connie Mack, who worked for the Hungary government to try and, A, first set up a phone call between Orban and the uh, president back in 2016. So everything sort of led to this meeting. So this is just the latest in a series of examples of a meetings the president is very willing to have because it makes him look strong as well. Uh, Which Connie th Mack? The, the, con the, member, the member of the House or the member of the Senate? The, the, uh, the, the member of the House. Member of the House. Exactly. Connie Mack the third or fourth. I believe that's right. Yeah. And he was a registered lobbyist right. uh, for Hungary, which is totally legal and fine. But sure. that is one of the uh, backstories, the backdrops of how this meeting uh, came to be here. But, uh, you know, certainly you can't see any other president uh, doing that.
because that hasn't happened yet. He hasn't gotten that type of uh, meeting and a red carpet as he had today. And today the Prime Minister, Sabrina, made a point to say he was proud to stand with the U.S., quote, on fighting against illegal migration. Well, just like uh, President Trump, Viktor Orban has taken a sharply uh, anti-immigration view, and he is one of the most prominent nationalists in Europe, which is why it's so striking that he would have an audience with the President of the United States and that he would be invited to personally come to the White House. He's made comments, Orban, that people have said are anti-Semitic, that people have said are Islamophobic. He's gone to war with the media. And a lot like President Trump, he also has cozied up to Vladimir Putin uh, and isolated himself from more traditional U.S. allies. So I think to Steve Bannon's point, this is someone that Trump does have a lot in common with. But it is uh, remarkable, yet again, that the president would be willing to host uh, a leader that many people have said is more authoritarian. And in some ways, it's part of a pattern because the president, as we know, time and again, has expressed an affinity for authoritarian tendencies himself. And he tends to act as though he does not uh, operate with the kind of understanding to the, you know, this is what it means to be non-traditional. Like you said, there is there was no private meeting where he might have said, hey, you know, you could make it a little easy for me to host you if you could just back off a little bit. No, he to him, I suspect that he might have asked him for some advice. I mean, the way he the way he praised him publicly, it does sort of begin to devalue the importance of America's moral leadership in the world if you're going to be seen as praising Putin, cozying up with people like Orban. And that's part of the uh, trend we've seen in the Trump presidency. And you know, especially in Eastern Europe, Central and Eastern Europe, so where there are a lot of countries that are sort of on the bubble. They, they liberalized. They seem to be sort of a, on a good path to democracy. There's some backsliding. Hungary is the most, has backslid the most. Poland is a little bit iffy, other places. And there are a lot of people in those countries, you know, who are themselves calculating, politicians and other business leaders. And this just sends the signal, you pay no price right. for going down the authoritarian road. The U.S., which has always been the, the you know, you're going to work, you know, that's always been a good argument for Democrats in those countries. You're going to damage relations with the United States of America if you go in this way. So maybe you don't even understand the moral arguments and the other arguments for, free, for liberal democracy, but it's going to hurt you. Then Trump, Trump has really damaged the people who should be our friends in neighboring countries to Hungary. And the U.S. ambassador to Hungary uh, raised some eyebrows. He was asked about the description of Hungary as a, quote, illiberal democracy, and he reportedly said, quote, I can tell you, knowing the president for a good 25 or 30 years, that he would love to have the situation that Viktor Orban has, but he doesn't. Now, the White House is saying that that quote was taken out of context, and maybe he meant it jokingly, I don't know, but the idea that Trump would love to have that kind of control. Trump has talked about that openly, how he would love <laughs> to have the authoritarian powers. And that's Orban's phrase, illiberal democracy. Yeah, he, right. he, yeah. pray, he touts that as his contribution as opposed to Western-style liberal democracy. That very much is a central theme of really every one of his rallies, and I suspect it will be that um, you know, sort of uh, coming ahead for, for the next 16 months or so.